Good morning. Welcome to worship. Today, of course, is the first Sunday in Lent and also Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day to everyone. We're going to begin our service with a worship intro this morning. Please stand and let us join in singing our praise song, Lord, I Need You. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. And when I 
cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope as day. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please join with me in the call to worship. For some of us, it was tempting to sleep in this morning. God has called us to this place to hear God's word, to open our hearts in prayer and in praise, and to seek direction for our lives. There are many temptations placed in front of us. We are called to be strong and place our trust in God. God is always faithful to us, loving, comforting, guiding, lifting us. Amen. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's The lily of the valley, in him alone I see All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay He tells me every care on him to go He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my grief has taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn. From my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me and Satan's chance be sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor help me break me here. While I live by faith and do His blessed will Oh, all of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear With His manna He will hungry soul shall fill Then sweeping up to glory to see His blessed face Where the rivers of delight shall ever roll He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Thank you for joining us. Please. Sorry visit. about that. If I tap my foot too hard, it skips. Let us pray. Lord, 
The temptations of the world loom large before us. We are enticed, cajoled, and sweet-talked into moving from lives of service to lives of self-centeredness. We need your healing love. As you resisted the temptations in the wilderness, help us to place our trust in you that we may be strong in our faith and confident in our service to you through serving others. Amen. Let us now show our joys and blessings and our concerns with one another. We have several young boys um, from our congregation that played basketball yesterday in Glenwood, and both teams did really well, second and third, so it's nice to see them play. It is. Congratulations to the boys. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. It's not really Kyra's birthday yet, but she's not going to be here in two weeks, so I'm going to say happy birthday to Kyra. Happy birthday, Kyra. (laughs) While while we're talking about birthdays, I know we have some other people that have birthdays this week that I'm going to share with you, and if we have others, let us know. Larry, your birthday's today. You're a Valentine's Day person. You are. And Cindy's is tomorrow, right? Cindy Haynes is tomorrow, um, and Eileen's is the 19th. Do we have any other birthdays? Let's celebrate those birthdays, okay? Everybody have a good week with birthdays. Thank you. We had a Valentine's little celebration downstairs, so I want to thank Emma for putting together the craft for all the kids. They were very cute, and I would love to thank and. The wonderful people who brought the food today. Uh, Mary brought some breakfast pizza the kids loved, and I think Bev brought donut holes and Anna made really yummy brownies, and Sharon brought some juice. So we want to thank you. It was a blessing that I didn't have to worry about that this morning. Plus, I didn't have to do breakfast. (laughs) Thank you for sharing. Sounds like a fun morning. I do want to uh, remind you that today we start our adult Lenten study using a book called Near the Cross. It's a Lenten journey of prayer, and we'll meet after church. And then the RCA Lenten series begins this Tuesday evening from 7 to 8.30 at the Carson Community Building. And next Sunday... um, Just so you know, we're going to have a representative from Omaha Street School in Omaha. That is going to be our mission offering for next Sunday, the third Sunday. So we thought it would be nice if you could know a little bit more about the ministry. So uh, again, a representative is coming from the school. It's an actual school um, that meets the needs of, of kids in the area. So they'll be coming to speak with you. So I hope you can come to hear what they have to share next week. Also, um, I learned this morning that Kathy Busby's mom, Ada Conant, passed away um, last week. So if you would keep uh, the family, and Kathy and all the family in your prayers, please. Any other joys or concerns this morning? Thank you, Merlin. I know it says passing the peace next, but we will do that after our our prayer time. So let us bow our heads for a time of silent prayer now. Gracious God, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving. We are grateful for your presence with us at this very moment and for always. God, we also come before you asking forgiveness for our doubts and our our wayward ways, God. Empower us by your spirit to do the ministry you have called all of us to do. Give us your hope, God, and joy and peace as we seek to share your love with others. And we do thank you, God, 
again for our many blessings. And today we lift up prayers for Trent, Patrick, Linda, Mary, Ryan, Shirley, Roger, Kellen, Aline, Severine, Carly, Kim, Dan, Art, Brad, Joe, Rod, Courtney, Claire, Jan, Alicia, Ada's family, Kathy, yeah, Busby, and her husband Daryl, and all of the family at the, the loss of Ada. And we pray for all those grieving the loss of loved ones. Our, our folks in the nursing home, we lift up to you, our veterans and our soldiers, uh, our families. And we pray for those who do not have the basic needs in life, God. And especially we lift to you today, God, those people who don't know your, your love, your endless, um, sacrificial, unconditional love, God. We pray that um, we could be in, in part an answer to that prayer, God, by sharing your word and love with others. We lift all these prayers up to you today, God, and pray in your Son's name. Amen. And would you please join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if you'd like to stand and greet your neighbor now, um, please do so. Thank you, choir, for sharing your gifts of music with us this morning. 
the children want to come forward, please. Anybody you know up there? <laughs> you lost your shoes. That's okay. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Good. It's Valentine's Day, isn't it? Yeah. What do you think about that? Heart. Bad. Bad. Some what? of you have red on hearts. It's about love. I see that. How nice. Very nice. Okay. Well, I want to talk about a big word today. (laughs) Um, Temptation. You ever heard of that word before? Have you? You've heard of it? Okay. Well, I am going to just show you a a book here. Right. I'm not going to read it to you, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit at the very beginning of this story. Um, God wanted Jonah to go to a town called Nineveh, okay? And Nineveh uh, was a horrible place. They had been doing some very bad things, um, and God was going to kind of give them a second chance. He wanted them to be reminded that they should be doing what God wants them to do and not doing horrible, lots of bad things. Horrible. And so... But aren't cats supposed to catch the mice? Jonah? Maybe. Wanted God to have some clouds fed around and then rain fire on the city. But then not, there's, that's a okay. then there's one guard left. Then he has to throw it up. Again. So, who did he send? Who did God send Jonah. to send? He sent Jonah to Nineveh to tell them that they needed to straighten up. Okay? But Jonah had a choice to make. He could go to Nineveh. That's the sign pointing to Nineveh. But you know what? Jonah did not think those people deserved a second chance. He thought they were bad people. He thought God should just get rid of them. He thought you shouldn't be giving them any second chances, God. So he had a choice to make. Do you know what Jonah did? Did he go to Nineveh? He went on a boat and sunk. He went the other direction. He went the opposite of Nineveh because he was tempted to do what? What he wanted to do, not what God wanted. So that's kind of what temptation is about a long time. Right. So we have a choice a lot of times. So I'm going to ask you some temptation questions, and you tell me what you think would be the right answer, okay? doesn't mean that's what we always do. Let's say you're watching your favorite cartoon show, if you have a favorite cartoon show, and you're really watching it, and you hear mom or dad yell from the other room and say, hey, come help me carry this, some groceries in. And you're kind of tempted to just pretend like you don't even hear them because you really want to watch your TV. What, don't you do? what would you do? I would just pause, pause the TV and then... And you'd still go, go help them? No, no, people have that ability. That not everybody has that ability. Or, or, or know how to do it. Okay, so... But the right answer would be to go help, right? We're acknowledge that's not important. I yes. get in trouble. Yeah, it is. Because um, I, um, there's something there and I can't see it. I look around and I look in the right spot and I don't know it's there. Don't always see... Well, we kind of all do that sometimes, don't we? We don't always see. Well, how about this then? Have you ever been in a store and you're like by the candy aisle and you really wanted a candy bar and mom and dad already said, no candy, nothing. And have you ever been tempted to just kind of, nobody's around, nobody's watching? Yeah. Have you ever been tempted just no. to maybe? Yeah. I've yeah. done no, that. No, I actually are watching. Casey's is loaded. So maybe you've been tempted or maybe you're not, but what's the right thing to do? Take not take it. So, but that's what temptation is. Sometimes when we see There's something we want that we're not supposed to take. Um, and I have one other question. This is a good one. Think about this I one, okay? Them, so if you are with your friends, okay, say you're out on the playground, and there's, and you know what I'm talking about, even at your age, that there's somebody there on the playground that's a little different than everybody else, and once in a while kids make fun of them. And so if your friends say, hey, let's go over there and make fun of that person, and, and you know if you don't, then they'll maybe start making fun of you. That's kind of a big temptation. Do you know what I mean? Nobody does that at our school. Oh, well, I'm glad. Yeah, Nobody I'm does sure. that? Okay. Well, yeah, I'm glad. Sometimes you see, maybe that's one of those things sometimes we see and sometimes we don't. But should we go make fun of somebody else? No. no. So even that might be a temptation to go along with the crowd. We have to say no. 
So the point today is in the Bible, it says that God will help you when you're tempted. So that's what I want you to remember, that when you are tempted to do something, whatever that is, and you know it's something mom and dad don't want you to do, you know it's something God doesn't want you to do, and you're having trouble, just stop right then and say, God, help me not to do this thing that you don't want me to do. And God says he'll help you, okay? Can you remember that? Because you're going to have lots of temptations in life. We all do. Okay? Um, and somebody unconscious with a giant squishy tomato. This is um, a bulletin called The Temptation of Christ because the Bible story is Jesus was even tempted. Jesus was tempted and God helped him not to give in to temptation. So God will help us too. So you, for, yeah, he was in the desert 40 days. You know that story. Should we bow our heads and you can pray a prayer with me? Help us to follow you, Jesus. When we are tempted to do the wrong things, help us to choose to follow you. Amen. Okay, this is about the temptation of Jesus. Kyler, waiting patiently. Thanks for waiting, guys. Get one. Today I am reading from Romans 10, 8 through 13. What is it? What it says is this: God's message is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is the message of faith we preach. If you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from dead, you will be saved. For it is by your own faith that we put right with God. It is by our confession that we are saved. The scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be displeased, disappointed. This includes everyone, because there is no difference between Jews and Gentiles. God is the same Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call to him. As the scripture says, everyone who calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. Please stand for the reading of the gospel lesson this morning from the gospel of Luke. And this is the temptation of Jesus. Jesus returned from the Jordan, full of the Holy Spirit, and was led by the Spirit into the desert, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. And all that time he ate nothing, so that he was hungry when it was over. The devil said to him, If you are God's son, order this stone to turn into bread. But Jesus answered, The scripture says human beings cannot live on bread alone. Then the devil took him up and showed him, in a second, all the kingdoms of the world. I will give you all this power and all this wealth, the devil told him. It has all been handed over to me, and I can give it to anyone I choose. All this will be yours, then, if you worship me. Jesus answered, The scripture says, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and set him on the highest point of the temple and said to him, If you are God's son, throw yourself down from here. For the scripture says, God will order his angels to take good care of you. It also says, they will hold you up with their hands so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. But Jesus answered, the scripture says, do not put your Lord to the test. When the devil finished tempting Jesus in every way, he left him for a little while. This is God's good news. Let us now join in singing, what a friend we have in Jesus. Please be seated. There is a dictionary that's called the Urban Dictionary. It gives um, definitions for maybe new words, new terms that weren't around a while ago. Um, And I found that um, escape hatch was one of the words that was in this dictionary. So I want to read to you what it says here for escape hatch. 
This says, when you look it up, it says, in the context of a blind date, an escape hatch is a prearranged call placed by a friend to your cell phone shortly after the start time of the date. If the date is going well, the call can be ignored. If the date is a nightmare so far, you answer, pretend that the caller is informing you of an emergency that requires your presence. Then excuse yourself immediately. This allows you to cut the date short without embarrassing either party. The phrase can also refer to the friend who places the call. Now, so um, maybe you haven't done that, but I, I'm sure there's at least a few of you that have had somebody call you when you wanted to go somewhere, right? When you didn't want to be at a meeting too long or somewhere and have someone call. Well, that's one definition of escape hatch. This morning, I want to talk about a different definition for escape hatch. This is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. No temptation has seized you that isn't common for people, but God is faithful. God won't allow you to be attempted beyond your abilities. Instead, with the temptation, God will supply a way out, an escape hatch, if he will, so that you will be able to endure it. So escape hatch could be defined as a way out of temptation that God will supply. No one is immune to temptation. It's a common part of life for all of us. And since our creator gave us free will, temptation comes into play whenever we have a choice to make, which is really pretty often. Um, you might have heard this morning prayer. Dear Lord, so far I haven't, I've done all right. Haven't gossiped, haven't lost my temper, haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. I'm really glad about that. But in a few minutes, God, I'm going to get out of bed and from then on, I'm going to need a lot more help. So we can relate, right? I started thinking about um, what temptations all of us might have faced since we got up this morning. So this morning when you woke up, if you can think back to that, you might have been tempted to stay in bed. That might have been a temptation. Or um, at least to do some other activity than come to church. Um, you probably had a choice unless your parent or a spouse maybe made you come. Um, that happens sometimes. But otherwise, you probably had a choice to make this morning. Um, you might have been tempted to whatever you had for breakfast. If you're on a restricted diet for some reason, you might have been tempted to eat something that you're not supposed to. Um, you might have been tempted to be less than patient with family members over something that was going on. Um, so maybe you lost your cool with, with family members this morning, or that was a temptation anyway. Uh, maybe when you drove to church, you got behind somebody that was going a little too slow and you got impatient and maybe you um, honked your horn at them or, or at the very least maybe used some language that you weren't proud of using. Um, or maybe as you were driving, you were tempted to answer your cell phone or text if somebody texted you. Maybe you're tempted to do that. Um, once you arrived at church, um, maybe you were tempted to share with a, a friend some of that gossip that you heard yesterday. Or maybe right now, as you're sitting there, you're tempted to play on your phone or balance your checkbook or some other activity instead of listening to the message. You know, the only reason I say that is because I have done those things during worship services, so I know they happen. Um, or maybe you came with a really heavy concern on your heart today that you handed over to God, um, but now you're worrying about it again. You've kind of taken it back. So let's see, it's mm, 20 till 11 or so. So think about how many temptations you faced in just that short time. We've got a lot of the day left, right, to get through. Um, we know that temptations have plagued humankind for centuries, since the beginning of time. We know that. Um, however, I did read there are some new temptations today that people have to deal with, at least some people. Um, new research shows two new temptations. One is, would you believe going off, is what they called it, on someone via text or email. Um, and, you know, that's, um, it's not like doing it in person, you know. I think sometimes we think people, um, we feel we can do it a little easier maybe. But that's a temptation that a lot of people say they face, that they say something they shouldn't in email or text to someone that they're upset with. And um, the other is spending too much time on media. I don't know if any of you feel like you do that or if that's a temptation. It says 44% of American adults admit to being tempted to spend too much time on media, which was the Internet, TV, video games, and cell phones. They, they admit that it's a temptation to them to spend too much time doing those things. Well, the scriptures teach us that God provides an escape hatch 
um, with regard to temptation because God knows how devastating giving into temptation can be for us, and certainly some temptations more so than others. It's not only harmful to us, but can be harmful to the people around us. Uh, giving into temptation can bring us shame and guilt. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. In the book of Ezra, um, Ezra really um, says how he feels. Um, the people that he was serving had um, given into temptation by breaking their covenant with God. So Ezra wrote these words, Oh my God, I am so ashamed. I blush to lift up my eyes to you, for our sins are piled higher than our heads, and guilt is boundless as the heavens. That's written in the book of Ezra. And we know that giving in to certain temptations can harm us physically, mentally, and emotionally. The same can happen to the people around us, especially the people we love. When we give in to temptations, we could be hurting the people we love and the people who love us. A lot of the temptations that we give in to are really called sins because we're going against what God wants for us. And, and that's, that's why I'm talking about temptation today because it really is serious because sin is serious. And sin separates us from God. So we always have to take that seriously. The problem with temptation is it promises, but it cannot deliver. Think about when you're tempted what um, the temptation is promising. Uh, for example, um, consider the temptation to take what isn't yours, which is a temptation for a lot of people in different ways. There's this promise that you will be happier because you're going to be richer, more powerful, um, f- more fulfilled. But we know in the long run um, that promise is not fulfilled. Um, temptation really is a great deceiver. Promises things that it does not deliver. Um, in an article titled Seven Things You Should Know About Temptation, I read the following. If fish could talk, I don't suppose there is a single fish ever caught on a hook that would say, I sure am glad I took that bait. We expect man to be smarter than fish, and we assume man will see the hook snatched to the bait, but for some reason, the reality of the hook doesn't seem to get our attention. That is, until a person has been snagged by it. Once you take the bait, you suddenly have a much deeper appreciation for the pain and the sharpness of the hook. Another problem with giving into temptation is oftentimes it increases your desire to keep doing it. And that's been proven too. Uh, Maybe it's because you feel like you're getting away with it. So then you just continue it and it gets worse. So again, we really do need an escape hatch. We need God to help us resist temptation. And God has already put those resources in place for for us. We already have them. First of all, God has given us what I want to call common sense. And granted, some people have a little more of it than others, but we all have some amount of common sense. Um, You may have heard this little joke, I guess you want to call it. On the TV show Hee Haw, some of you, probably a lot of you don't remember that, but um, it was a while ago. Doc Campbell is um, confronted by a patient who says he broke his arm in two places. And Doc replies, well, then stay out of those places. You know? But he may have something there, right? We cannot regularly put ourselves in the face of temptation and not be affected by it. When faced with the problem of temptation, we need to take the good teachers, excuse me, good doctor's advice and stay out of those places. Um, if you're tempted to give in to sin when you're in a certain place, then, then don't go there if, if you can help it. If certain friends do things that you know are not what God wants you to do, and if you're tempted to do those same things when you're with them, then you probably should try to find some new friends. If you regularly buy something that is harming you in one way or another, and you have trouble resisting it once it's in your home, then don't buy it. Or if there's something harmful in your home that tempts you, get rid of it. You know, uh, the third one, um, something in in your home that's harming you in another way, um, and I know you wouldn't probably consider this a harm, but they're not good for you. And mine is potato chips. Do you like potato chips? They are so, I think they're delicious. They're like my weakness. And I buy them once in a while, not often. Um, and I put them on top of the refrigerator. And I can sit at my dining room table and I can't see the refrigerator, but I lean this way over. I can see them. And so honestly, I'm sitting there doing something and I lean over and I see them. I think, oh, I would sure like some. But then I say, no, Karen, they're not healthy for you. So I go eat an apple or I eat string cheese or I have a glass of milk because that's healthier. But then after I'm done, I'm still. And so 
a lot of times, seriously, I just think I'm going to count them out because I think 17 chips has 150 calories. I know, exactly. So I think I'll just count 17 chips out, put them on a plate, and that's good. That's not too bad. So I do that, and I count them out, but then you know what happens? It's like, that went pretty fast. <laughs> so I count out another 17, and before I know it, I've eaten like half the bag of potato chips. And, um, and I know that's not that harmful considered when you consider all the things you can be tempted, but it still um, shows us what happens, right? When we give in to temptation, we just want a little more and a little more. Um, it's hard to resist when it's right in front of us. So I think that's the point. We have to stay away if we can from temptation. Um, so basically avoid places, people, and things that tempt you. That's just common sense. Um, and the Bible talks a lot about when we unexpectedly come upon a tempting situation that we didn't know we were going to face. The Bible says to flee, just to run. You know, don't, if you're too proud to say, you know, um, I think this is going to be a temptation. I don't think I can handle it. The Bible says just flee, just turn and run the other direction. And then um, the Bible addresses to what if you can't get out? What if you're somewhere where you can't get away from the temptation? Very clearly, the Bible says to pray. Ask God to help you resist. Call upon the Holy Spirit. Ask God to show you his plan of escape since you don't have one right there. Um, We have to learn to trust God that when we are tempted and we don't see a way out, we have to believe that God will help us, that God will provide a way. Uh, The passage that Emma shared with us from Romans reminds us that trusting with the heart leads to goodness. That was what she read. Trusting with the heart leads to goodness. In our gospel lesson about the temptation that I shared with you of Jesus, his resource, um, if you noticed, was the word of God as a weapon to fight temptation. He quoted scripture when he was being tempted. Um, Since chances are uh, we will not have a Bible in hand or maybe even close when we are tempted, um, we need to know what the Bible says. You know, that's one of the reasons I talk a lot about studying the Bible and knowing the word of God because the scriptures clearly teach us that it is a way to um, protect ourselves from temptation. And if we don't know what the Bible says, then it makes it hard to use it to resist temptation. And the other thing is um, about thinking about God when we're tempted. You know, when I was a youth, there were things, as all youth are, that I was tempted to do that I didn't do because I knew my actions would disappoint my parents. I knew how much my parents loved me and I didn't want to hurt them. I'm not saying I always chose the right way because I did not. Uh, But thinking about how my parents would feel if I had done something that I knew I shouldn't do helped me, um, at least some of the time, to resist temptation. I think if we can try to remember how much our Heavenly Father loves us and how God is saddened by our sins, that knowledge alone may help us to resist temptation. I, I just think the important thing to know about temptation is we should take it seriously. We should realize that no one is immune. People that say they aren't, can never be tempted are the ones that are really caught off guard when they are. We need to know that giving in to certain temptations means we are sinning. It, it, it's, it, I can't say it any clearer. Certain temptations are really sin. We are going against what God wants for us. We are hurting God when we sin, and we need to know that God has provided a way of escape. Um, today, of course, is Valentine's Day, a day we traditionally... And give maybe candy or flowers and talk about love, gifts of love. Um, last week was Transfiguration Sunday, and, and those of you that were able to be here um, heard me talk about Peter and James and John that went on the mountaintop with Jesus, and they actually saw him transfigured. His face was glowing, his clothes became white, and God actually um, said, This is my beloved son, follow him. And so Peter, James, and John were witness. Um, to Jesus um, being called the Son of God. So they knew without a doubt that Jesus was the Son of God. And, and I, I said that this was a gift from God because as they would continue to do their ministry, they would meet so many struggles and obstacles and their own lives would be put in danger. Um, so they needed something. They needed their faith deepened. And so they would always have this memory of this actual event where they knew without a doubt that Jesus was the Son of God. And I said that this was a gift from God, a gift of love to Peter and James and John because God loved them so much and he wanted to help them. Today, I hope that you can see that this escape hatch I've been talking about 
that God provides to us to resist temptation is really an act of love by God, a, a huge act of love by God. God created us. God knows all about temptation through Jesus' life on earth. God doesn't want us to suffer the consequences of giving in to temptation, and, and some of them can be severe sometimes. God loves us, and God wants to help us. We need to always remember that we serve a God who is greater than any temptation we will ever face. And I cannot end my message about Temptation Day without adding just a word or two of grace. We all fall sometimes, all of us. None of us are perfect. And when we do give in to temptation, we need to ask God's forgiveness. We need to trust in God's power to forgive. And then we need to offer that same grace to others. I like what F.B. Meyer, he's a Baptist pastor, he wrote with regard to judging others. When we see a brother or sister giving into temptation, there are two things we do not know. First, we do not know how hard he or she tried to resist. And second, we do not know the power of the forces that assailed him or her. We also do not know what we would have done in the exact same circumstances. We are not to judge others. That is God's work, not ours. We are blessed to serve a God who loves us beyond measure, a God who offers us grace, a God who offers us a new start, and a God who not only wants to help us resist temptation, but has the power to do so. Thanks be to God. And all God's children said, Amen. It is now time to take our offering. If the ushers would, would come forward, please. Let us join in praying our prayer of dedication. Lord, when we are tempted to save ourselves and expect money or possessions to bring us happiness, remind us that you alone fulfill our deepest desire and bring us eternal joy. Bless the gifts we bring and give us courage to live more fully for you. Amen. Let us now sing Standing on the Promises 374.
Thank you for worshiping with us today. We invite you to stay for a time of fellowship and refreshments. And I do pray you have a blessed day and blessed week. Go in peace. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you for always. Amen. Amen.